Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Jim Smith. Okay, today, reacting to this video, documentary of Marui, 153 Days of War. Okay, last time I reacted to the Battle of Marui, I got to know about it a bit, but not enough. I want to know about it more. I mean, the Philippines, where I love, I must be more familiar with that, right? So this time, reacting to the documentary of Marawi so that, that I can get more knowledge about it. Well, it's gonna be a long video this time, so you guys ready? And let's go! If you enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new here. So, let's get into it! sound death destruction oh. Despair. We're in a Muslim cemetery in Marawi City. The remains of 27 bodies recovered oh, from the battle zone are buried here. Local terror groups attempt to take over the Islamic city of Marawi in southern Philippines during the holy oh. month of Ramadan. What do they want? Establish a caliphate where ISIS or Daesh will rule. Oh yeah, Ramadan is... Uh, I, I don't really know about the Ramadan, but yeah, I've heard of it before. It's a very special day for the uh, Muslims. So I guess make made some noise at that day. That's terrible, isn't it? It's war. Filipinos against Filipinos. Oh my God. It's like a domestic war. Soldiers, terrorists, battle over territory and flag. Oh, Duterte. President Rodrigo Duterte declares martial law in Mindanao. It's the biggest crisis of his young administration. Mm. Armed Forces Chief General Eduardo Año vows to use his new powers to defeat the enemy. We will use the special powers of martial law to uh, defeat this Maute group and other... Oh armies. yeah, yeah Maute, I googled it a bit. It's the IS team, right? Uh, made this incident. Groups who are uh, have connected to rebel and trying to dismember this part of the territory from the people. Oh, it's a rocket! Wow. Residents flee. Yeah, I can't believe. It. Yeah, of course, resident residents are there. They are living as usual in the war zone. It's, imagine, it's so scary, isn't it? The once bustling Islamic city turns oh, into a ghost. So strange for me. I mean, I thought Philippines was, you know, a Christian country, so when I see that kind of Arabic character, that's so strange. It feels like they are like uh, Indonesian or something. There's no easy explanation for the tragedy that hits Marawi. The clashes start in a village called Basak Malutlut where the military spots a most wanted terrorist oh. leader and moves in to take him. He's hiding out there, right? <laughs> Bullet holes on freshly Whoa. painted walls show the intense firefight that erupted in this safe house. Oh my god, look at that building! It's like a cheese! There are lots of holes. I think it's made by guns, right? Oh, that's unbelievable. Basak Malutlut. 
The Marawi crisis started here. This four-story building with a red gate was the target of a military raid on May 23 because here they spotted Abu Sayyaf leader Isnilon oh. Hamilon. The first clashes erupted here. ISIS names Isnilon Hapilon its top leader in Southeast Asia. The veteran terrorist leader based in Basilan is responsible for so many atrocities in Mindanao. He has long been the subject of a manhunt. In Marawi, he joins young radicals who grew up in the city. The Maute brothers led by Omar and Abdullah. They all pledge allegiance to ISIS. Kaya nabigla yung tulupan natin dahil ang nung mag uh, gusto nilang huliin si Isnero Napilon, kukunti lang naman yung tropa doon sa bahay na yon. Pero nung lapitan nila yung bahay at uh, pasokin yung gate, lumaban sila. Tapos yung mga paligid na, yung mga bahay-bahay sa paligid, meron din palang mga armado doon. Hapilon escapes arrest yet again. What happens next surprises the generals. Armed Marawi residents rush into the streets, wave the ISIS black flag, and God. attack strategic points around the city. They occupy a Maypakpak medical center. They harass Camp Ranao, the military headquarters. They surround the city hall. Hindi natin pwedeng uh, iwanan ng city hall dahil uh, there were attempts na gusto nilang pasokin ito and they will take over the... Uh, they wanted to raise the flag. Yes, they release prisoners at the city jail, set ablaze the Protestant run Dunsalan mm -hmm. College and the Catholic St. Mary's Parish. They take hostages along the way, move towards Bangalore, the city's commercial district, where they hold out for months. Barangay Maria Cristina Balos. Marawi Bishop Edwin de la Peña is away when the terrorists attack the city. But his residence is packed with workers oh. in the middle of preparations for a Catholic fiesta. Catholic fiesta, it's a holiday, right? So, yeah, residents must not prepare for that, right? So, oh, that's bad timing, really bad timing. Uh, they were uh, ready captives, no? When the uh, terrorists oh, came in. They knew they are coming. They take his right-hand man, Father Chito Suganob, and church staff. Naka-receive ako ng tawag using the cell phone of my secretary. But uh, to my surprise, uh, yung boses ay boses lalaki at saka matapang at saka he was mm. uh, ordering me this to do this and that no uh, he was giving me his demands no na dapat iparating ko sa sa military uh, that uh, they uh, declare oh. a ceasefire the so the father uh, cares more about the resident life rather than the you know, his life. That's a oh, brave decision. Bishop hears crying in the background. The man gives the phone to Father Chito. Si Father Chito, sabi na, kami ay nahostes ngayon dito, Bishop. The bishop gets in touch with the military and receives instructions to keep communication lines open. I called back. I, I was the one who contacted them that I, I have already relayed the message. Hindi ko na makontak. Wala na, wala na. The line was, oh. was cut off, no? The armed men also target Dansalan College, College. a protestant-run school the Maute brothers attended as young boys. Oh. I see, yeah. They, they tried to brainstorm the kids so that they believe, you know, IS activity is a right activity. Yeah, but dominating college, how can you be so evil? That's terrible. I think uh, IS member also believes the God, right? But this kind of attack is allowed, so uh, I can't believe it. As yung mga maranao sabi na, sa sabihin yun to sa mga officials yun or military yun na kuha namin yung mga teachers yun or co teachers yun ganon. Nalabas sila kami pinapasok sa van. Pagpasok sa van sabi niya, nasip nagiiyakan na yung mga babae as well as kami din. Father Chito is also forced into the van. And off they went to Bangolo. Ikot ikot. Mm. Then, may stopover kami in Bangolo. Yun yung natakot kami kasi parang pinaline kami. Sabi nila, lumabas kayo ng van, magline kayo. Oh. Akala nga namin doon na yung parang execution. Na oh. pinatawa, baka babarilin na lang kami doon. For days, the bishop fears Father Chito is dead. 
until the eighth day when he appears in a terrorist propaganda video. Please consider us. We want to live another day. We want to live another month. We want to live a few years. Oh my god, father was killed. But I really respect him. He was appealing the peace for IS, sacrificing himself. His appealing might not reach their mind, but his appealing was meaningful and some were at least moved, I guess. This is Baloi Bridge in Marawi City. At the height of the war, it is one of the three critical bridges mm. in the battle area. It has seen a lot of fighting oh and death. God. It's still day one of the siege, but it is already close to midnight. First Lieutenant Geraldo Alvarez takes two armored vehicles and 19 men with him to rescue a wounded officer and bring in reinforcement troops. Paglabas ko ma'am dun sa ano ma'am sa brigade. Uh, ano na ma'am, ma nakakahinala na lahat ng paligid ma'am. The bullets come flying as soon as they reach the really? bridge. Yun nga lang ma'am habang nagmumuba ko dun sa tulay may hinarang silang sasakyan. So dun sa sasakyan na yun nagkataon ma'am na kayang-kaya namang banggain ng tanke ko ma'am. So binangga ko siya. Nakapasok ma'am yung tanke. Inside enemy territory, he learns that military armor can only do so much against rocket-propelled grenades or RPG. So the thing is, why are they armed so well? Why, how did they get such a strong weapons? From where? <laughs> That's what I'm really curious. Kailangan kong umatras. Kaya lang nang aatras na ako ma'am, uh, doon may parang uh, minaso na ma'am yung vehicle ko ma'am na na RPG na pala ako ma'am. Hindi pa ako nakakalayo ma'am ng mga ano, uh, nasira na ma'am yung vehicle, hindi na gumana. So pag hindi na gana ma'am, sinundan naman nila kami ma'am. So pagkasunod, sabi ko, uh, kailangan nating lumabas ng tanke. Thus begins the biggest battle of their lives. Mm. Their training, his leadership, are put to the test. Nawala na yung usok doon sa vehicle, nakita ko na yung situations nila. So doon na, na yung isa nakahandusay ma'am, uh, Nung paghila ko si late private for last, pag sinasandal ko siya, humiwalay man ma'am yung bewang niya kasi nun. So, idinikit ko na lang ma'am. They apply first aid on each other while they repel the attacks. Kahit na yung mga bulag ma'am, so sila ma'am yung uh, pumuputok. Kung baga sinahit ko muna ma'am yung ano nila, yung baril nila. Sabi ko wag na nilang galawin, kakalabitin nyo na lang. Gamitin nyo na lang yung signs, uh, sense of hearing nyo. Oh, sense of hearing. <laughs> That was a situation like... A commander couldn't give an order. That was a terrible situation. Soldiers are, you, you know, firing spontaneously. <laughs> I guess the situation was chaotic. The rescuers need rescuing. But by then, troops can't cross Baloi Bridge anymore. Oh. Yung isang tropa ko ma'am na may putol ng paa, sabi niya, sir, uh, uhaw na uhaw na ako. Uh, dahil ano hindi man uh, pagkagano na masyado na yung wounded niya hindi masyadong pinapainom so parang uh, deep deep lang ng konte ganun so, so umikot na naman ako ng sector kaso pagbalik ko na naman sa kanya uh, parang inaayos na lang niya yung sarili niya hanggang sa yun uh, parang nalagutan na siya ng hininga oh, a chopper terrible. comes for them but enemy snipers force the pilots to leave oh, Alvarez and his men take cover inside houses nearby they try to restore the vehicle but to no avail. They are on their own for days. Kami ma'am yung ano doon, bumabagbag. Hanggang sa napagod na ma'am yung, ano, yung gunner ko ma'am. Kasi nag, yung driver, jajaki yung palagi yan. Tapos yung gunner, sila lang yung uh, bumabagbag doon sa mga snipers ma'am. They run out of bullets. The driver volunteers to get what's left in the other vehicle. Nung isasampan niya na doon sa vehicle, tinamaan siya sa tagiliran ma'am. Nung tinamaan siya tagiliran ma'am, nakapasok pa siya ma'am sa loob ng vehicle. So nakapag-jacking pa, sabi ko okay lang, okay, hindi ka anong malala yung tama niya ma'am. Kaya lang napansin namin ma'am, yung jacking niya, yung atras na banti niya, iba na. Hanggang sa niradyohan na ako ma'am na, ano, na nalagutan na siya ng hininga ma'am. So yung nagamit, nadala niyang bala ma'am, yun ma'am yung naka, ano, nakapatay ma'am dun sa mga pilit na lumalapit ma'am dun sa amin ma'am. Enemies burn the houses troops are occupying. Alvarez loses another wow. man to enemy sniper. Is this real world? <laughs> oh my god, what I'm watching it. Oh my, am I watching the the game world? <laughs> this is like COD world, world of COD. I can't believe this happened in actual 
Wild. Unbelievable. Bumalik ma'am yung ano, yung Air Force. Pinakawalan niya ma'am yung ano, yung rocket niya dun sa north ko, tapos dun sa may east portion ko. So, ano ma'am, at least natamimi ma'am yung mga kalaban dun ma'am. After several failed attempts, rescue finally comes on the fifth day. Sumisigaw sila lahat, tropa, tropa, hanggang nagpapaulan din sila ng bala ma'am. Bullets rain on them as they move towards the extraction point where choppers are waiting. Oh. Na doon kami nagkita-kita so yun na halos din na nila makilala kasi panay, parang uling na yung itsura ko noon ma'am. Alvarez brings home 15 of the 19 men he brought with him. A remarkable achievement in the battlefield. Mm. He is nominated to receive the highest combat award, the Medal of Medal. Valor. Feeling ko tinulungan talaga kami ng Diyos kasi parang inilayo kami talaga ma'am. Sa mga tama ng balas. It will take the military two months to regain control of Baloi Bridge. The bloodiest day of the war happened here when 13 Marines died on June oh. 9, 2017. Rest in peace. Oh. It's a song called Ramadan, right? Yeah. I sometimes go visiting Malaysia and hear that song. Marawi is notorious for loose firearms. It took a while for residents like Abdul Moheming to realize it isn't the usual rido or clan war anymore. Sana rin na four days sa bakbakan. Kaso lang ito, sobra na ito. Noon, mga rido lang, yung patay-patay lang sa daan. Ngayon, nagsobra na ngayon. Marami na napugutan ng ulo dyan, dyan malatlat. He evacuates on day five of the clashes. Sobra na. Hindi kami makatulog sa putukan. Oh, Nagamitan na ng yung mga bomba na malalakas. Yung hindi namin kaya pakinggan. Yes. You, you can't live in the war zone. But escape is not as easy for others. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. No. Neighbors turn into heroes in the rush to rescue civilians trapped in the battle zone. Residents are hiding in the house. In areas rescuers cannot reach, residents like Anisa Mojado brave the crossfire. Tumakas kami tatlo na doon sa ikom, doon yung bahay namin. Kaya ang ginawa ko, umakyat ako wow, ng father, so eh, tumalon kami. Kaya tumakbo na tumakbo kami pasiksag, makagrinig kami ng motor ng mga ISIS na yan, magtago kami. Din tatakbo naman. Makikita din namin na helicopter, oh. kaya baka hindi kami nila makikita. Kaya hindi natin alaban, alam kung sinong kalaban mo. <laughs> she's so, she's amazing. So she escaped from the war zone like ninja. <laughs> That's... Oh, some residents are so brave. Uh, yeah, I know. To live, uh, they had no choice but to escape. Being brave, yeah, that was the only choice. Soldier at Bangalore Bridge and screams for help. Sabi ko, tulong, civilian kami. Na yung sinalubong nila ako, na tinulungan nila ako, doon kami nakaligtas. Ang dami-dami ngayon, civilian dyan, hindi nakalabas. Sabi nila, uy, kung makalabas ka dyan, sabihin mo, marami pa dito, ha? Oo, sabi ko, upo, upo. In the middle of all the violence, residents like Norodin Alonto Lukman and his niece make a stand to defy the radicalism the terrorists espouse. Muslims protect their Christian neighbors. I told my Christian friends who are with me that I will die first before they kill you. Mga kasama namin na nagsabi na lang kami ng oh. Allah Akbar para malam, malaman nila na lahat kami oh, um, maranaw. She's too young. Make no mistake about it. The people, the Muslim people in this country are outraged by this action of some people who want, who wants to drive a wedge between the Muslims and Christians and to destroy our city and destroy the relationship between Muslims and Christians in this country. Back in the safe house in Basak, Malutlut, the military recovers a video showing Hapilon and the Maute brothers planning the attack, mm. along with Malaysia's most wanted militant, Mahmud Akman. Oh. So, yeah, this guy, Mahmoud Ahmad, yeah, Malaysian, uh, wanted man. He, he's a key player in the IS, right? 
I think may, many a member of IS uh, came came to Philippines from outside from the overseas, and uh, the, this you know um, uh, organization getting bigger, got bigger and bigger. But the the thing is, why member such a member are gathered in the Philippines in Mindanao? That's a question. Why? It confirms the foreign fighters are in Marawi. <laughs> The video is part of propaganda footage the terrorists shot. Mm. Uh, well, the grand plan of uh, this multi ISIS group is actually in uh, time of the first day of Ramadan, they will uh, seize the whole of Marawi and uh, proclaim an Islamic caliphate or state, just like uh, what happened in Mosul when uh, al Baghdadi occupied Mosul. June 2014. General Anyo says the raid in Basak Malutlut foiled a bigger terror attack. They are not able to fully deploy all their forces, actually, even additional forces from AKP and DAFF. Supposedly, they are not pa. But because of what happened when we raided the safe house on May 23, where we got also the copy of the videos uh, in that safe house, now about lahat, naging premature na lahat. But it also shows how much the military underestimated the enemy, despite intelligence reports weeks before the attack. Why underestimate them? Actually, I reacted to the video uh, telling about the SAF 44 that was uh, caused by you know um, inappropriate decision by uh, made by the you know um, Philippines Army's commander. So, I see sometimes. Um, problem happened in Philippines because of the you know negligence so Filipinos uh, must be careful more <laughs> especially this kind of you know a serious uh, incident must be prepared well The military operations are led by men who hunted down Hapilon for years. Lieutenant General Charlie Galvez is chief of the military command responsible for almost all of the areas in southern Philippines where terrorism is a threat. Politician Mujib Hataman worked with Galvez when he was a young officer in Basilan. Si General Galvez po, ang Western Mindanao commander, nag-brigade commander din ho niya sa isla ng Basilan. Kaya tila ata mainit sa kanya si Isnilon Hapilon. The ground commander in Marawi is his classmate in military school. Major General Rolly Bautista also came from Basilan. Oh. Assault wife oh. is cool though. some sniper over there. SR sniper rifles. That's cool. Uh, he's putting some attachment the, on the nozzle so that you, you can't see the fire from that. Yeah, cool attachment. This is how the war is fought here in Marawi City. It is urban warfare. The main battle area is about 200 meters away. The Marines here who are used to fighting in the jungles occupy tall buildings. And snipers here oh bore a God. hole on the wall so they could have a view of the- Oh my God, you are reporting from the war zone. Really dangerous place, are you? By the way, are you safe? You should be evacuated. The main battle area. Gentlemen, kung nakikita nyo ang hirap na sundalo, pag-clear niya lang ano, ng pababa, sa baba, buhos, minamaso niya yan, yung uh, kabilang dinding, dahil pagka, pagka kumaliwa ka ng kanan, nado na sniper. Mm. So ang ginagawa natin, binubutas natin yung dinding. Ganun ang ano, ganun ang ano, ganun ang kahirap. Yung dalawang ano, dalawang building, dalawang araw din namin binubutas. Ang dami namin namamatay sa pagbutas lang isang building. 
Yeah, I know. There are lots of buildings, which means there's a many places where you can hide out. So once you、um, exit from the building, you are exposed, and、uh, you know you could be attacked, fired by many snipers. They're hiding in the building. That's so tough task. We're looking at the 105 millimeter cannon of the Philippine Army. We are 200 to 300 meters away from the position of the enemies. It's the final push to end the war in Marawi, and from here we can already see the tallest building in the battle area, the CND Center Point, where one of the officers of the army was killed. Actually, I respect this、uh, reporter. She she's so brave, reporting from the war zone. To you know, report the what's going on exactly in the war zone.、Uh, to you know, everywhere, she could be killed, but she prefer her you know obligation,、uh, sh- her job. That's honorable, really. She must be respected. The Philippine military fought urban warfare in Sambuanga City in 2013, but Marawi is so much worse.、Mm. Army. Air Force. Air Force is coming. That's Navy. Navy. Combined. Serious war, isn't it? Forces in the biggest, longest, and bloodiest operation of the Philippine military、mm. since World War II. Oh my God! Really? I didn't know that. Oh, I should be sorry for that. Allies come to help. U.S., Australia, fly surveillance yeah, planes to help locate the enemy. China sends rifles.、Mm. The mission is complete. How about Japan? We donated some money. I hope so. Flex. Neutralize the terrorists while making sure the hostages are safe. The military resorts to airstrikes, horrifying residents like Normira Pangarungan who fear bombs will destroy their homes or kill loved ones still trapped、helped. in the battle zone. Sing magbumba bumba sila. Mas lalo ngayon. Paano sila? Kung may natira pang isang dal- dalawa tatlo, patay na. Yun ang problema ko man. Kahit nandito ako na para nandun ako, gusto ko pa pumasok doon. Life is first. Kailangan lang sa pito. Kahit hindi pwede na kasi mga kuman yung mga kapatid ko. Yun ang panganay. Weeks later, she is reunited with her family. Oh, really? But her nightmare is all too real to the military. At least twice, bombs accidentally hit troops. Wow, this building! <laughs> yeah, it's like a building coming up the battle royale in COD. <laughs> wow, so、oh, I can't believe it. The Marawi War forces young officers to grow old beyond their years. Billy Kojam left military school only three years ago. In June, his company was pulled out of Basilan to join、mm. the fighting here. Nani bago ako mam kasi simply. Wala pa akong masyado yung experience sa urban warfare. Ano ba yung pinakamahirap sa urban warfare? Sa urban warfare is, is sniping, ma'am. Tapos yung、uh, labasan nila yung bahay, ma'am, maggumawa ng butas. Abangan yung butas nila, ma'am. Tapos pag pumasok yung mga ba, doon na nila puputukan, ma'am. Uh, you cannot expect... Firing from there, wow! So scary. The young guy from the troops. Um, as soon as you graduated from the, you know, military school, you are、uh, sent to the, you know, warfare. That's kind of a really、um, good experience for him, but must be really scary. I I don't know which one is good, but this is his fate. So yeah, it cannot be helped. Won't forget his first battle in Marawi. The mission: clear this green building that serves as an enemy stronghold, as shown in videos recovered from the enemy. The first thing we did was we had a fire pit in the back. We had to fire it. 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 Uh, in two or three, ng kalaban yung ibang nakawindit sa kalaban. So serious. Colonel Mon Almodovar is Kojam's battalion commander. 
nung mga first uh, days kasi, few days, very strong pa yung defensive pa ng kalaban. And we, ang na-assign sa amin, is clear yung dalawang building na matataas dyan sa harap, yung pagpasok mo dito, yung nasunog na building na kulay green yung roof. Mm. Oh, many holes. Dito ma'am, naipit kami dito ma'am. Sa first floor, pagpasok namin sa first floor ma'am is may kalaban na pala sa second floor at saka third floor ma'am. Pinapasok lang kami sa first floor. Hindi na kami maka-extricate. Ang oh, last option ng mga trap. nilabat ko at saka yung company commander ko ma'am is uh, putukan yung second floor at saka third floor habang nag-extricate kami ma'am. Pinasok yung dalawang tanke, dumikit kami dun sa tanke ma'am. Then, dahan -dahan kami mm. It will take them four attempts in a span of three days to take the building. Oh, three days! God! Just to take one building takes three days. Wow, tough mission. One soldier is oh. killed. Bad. Troops push on and learn new tactics along the way. But so do the enemy. The mosques make good hiding places. God. Doesn't look a mosque like it looks more like enemy's fortress. We are limited to ano to strike yung mga mosque or kanyo ni natin bombahin natin yung mga mosque. So because of that, you know, the mosque anymore. Cultural sensitivities and respect for religion. Safe na safe pa rin sila dyan sa ilalim ng mosque, sa basements niya. They also bore holes and dig tunnels. The military can found buildings with airstrikes, but enemies can move from one building to another using these. Mm. So nung una, hindi sila naguhukay. Eventually, habang tumatagal, naguhukay na sila, nagtatunnel na sila. So, kumbaga, nag-improve din yung kanilang mga tactics at mga techniques. <laughs> it's like, uh, what? First World War, you know, digging a lot of tunnels so that you can avoid the, you know, fire, uh, gunfires. One of the strategy uh, which was really popular in uh, First World War. So, kaya tayo, we have to adapt din sa kanila, dito based on kung ano yung tactics ng kalaban. Oh, may tao sa likod ng 621, kamo. No, enemy is uh, detected. Dalawa, tatlo. Bilisan mo, singit ka muna. Tatlo. Tatlo. Sir, sir, may sir. A new problem emerges as troops close in. Improvised explosive devices or IEDs. IEDs. Oh, it's a small um, bomb, uh, aka terrorist bomb, right? Oh, it's a lethal weapon. Suspected nating IED. Hindi natin malaman kung anong klasing ordnance item siya. Pero most probably remote control siya. Uh, by cell phone, by cell phone. Oh, Yung mobile really? detonation niya is by cell phone. The battle area becomes even more complex. Troops need to move fast to evade enemy snipers, but not too fast or they will trip on these bombs. Mm. The death toll rises. Oh. You could be killed. There always there. Pag sundalo ka, nandyan lang talaga. Yung isang pamo, lalo na pag nasa gera ka, it's always nakabaw na yung yung isang pamo sa hukay. So expected na namin yan. So, however, we as leaders, we, we, we tried so hard para protectahan yung aming sunda. I'm just wondering how they feel, I mean, how soldiers feeling when they are sent there. You know, they are fighting, of course they are fighting for the, you know, their countries for the sake of the Philippines. It's honorable, but in their mind how they are feeling must be so scary some must feeling they want to escape asap but i'm so yeah respect uh, armies and troops their mind is so strong Hello. almodovar's third scout ranger battalion later plays a big role in ending the war Ooh. wow that was surprising 
galing kami sa buteg yung sa kuan. Oo. Matagal na yung mga uh, ilang buwan na yung ngayon. Lumikas na yung mga ISIS. Dito sila nag-transfer. Eh, sabi ko, bakit ganito na kahit saan pa yung pumunta na may ano? The war against ISIS-linked groups in the Philippines did not start in Marawi. It's in Butig, where the Maute brothers operated for years. Mm. It just so happened that the mother is from Butig. So, uh, napag-isipan nila itong ano, plano nila. Dito sila pumunta sa Butig. Nangyari lang siguro, I guess, na dahil malawak yung uh, bundok namin, at saka video may kanooban ito, dito sila nagtatago kahit ma... medyo malayong abuti na military. Butik is no ordinary town. It's host to one of the biggest camps of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the country's dominant Muslim rebel group. This is how the peace process is connected to the war in Marawi. The father of the Maute brothers was once a member of MILF. He and his sons rejected the political solution the group espouses, the creation of a new Bangsamoro region that will give Muslims wider powers over their land. I see. The Maute's prefer the radical ideology of ISIS and decide to carve their own territory. MILF Peace Panel Chairman Mohagher Iqbal says they work to counter the spread of ISIS ideology. Only the factor of the MILF is preventing the multi group to recruit uh, so many people to their side. I see. So MILF, they are keeping, you know, protecting their ideology, uh, w which uh, creates this kind of bad team. Yeah, Philippines are a democratic uh, country, right? So. So keeping, you know, each ideology is important, uh, but which could be made, made, make this kind of bad incident. So this is really a really difficult topic, isn't it? But delays in the peace process erodes the MILF's influence, especially among the young. The leadership of the MILF uh, belongs to the first generation of leaders. And they are, are, they are advocating for the political resolution of the conflict in Mindanao, which government has not yet complied fully, especially the passage of the BBL. So in terms of uh, uh, moral ascendancy, I think uh, the Modi group is taking something from the moral ascendancy of the MLA. It's become a battle for legitimacy. In 2016, the town that enjoyed relative peace since the MILF embraced the peace process becomes a battle zone once again. We're here at the Municipal Hall of Batig Town in Lanao del Sur. Last week, the Maute group occupied this abandoned municipal building and for the first time raised the black flag of the ISIS. Hapilon joins the Maute brothers in Buti. They receive funding from ISIS. Foreign fighters also come to help. I Clashes see. moved to Piagapo in April, and then Marawi in May. So, Mindana was the best place to launch the IS um, organization at that time because of IS ideology was expanding there at that time, and it was a good timing to gather the many the people who has who's got IS ideology. So that's why. Uh, they got many funding from the, you know, uh, IS headquarters or many countries and uh, they gathered, they could gather the many members from the outside. I see. I'm getting to know about this incident. That's why. The wedding of Norin Shah Bashir and Jomar Saumai lifts the spirits of the evacuees at the tent city in the town of Pantar. Life goes on despite the difficult situation in evacuation centers. But it's a long wait for the war to end. Oh, adorable. Inside the battle area, hostages learn to live with their captors. Lord Vin Acopio is tasked to tend to wounded Maute fighters. Dr. Omar, I know that I was just going to do what I was doing. Some reasons are uh, no choice but to help uh, IS.
He loves to cook. Nakadanasan ko nga na halos 3 days na hindi nakatulog kasi may mga patients na dagsaan. Siyempre, mumonitor mo yung gamot. Mumonitor mo yung kailangan niya kasi kakailip mo. Sabi niya, ihi ako, mga ganyan. Or matutulog ka na sana, sabi niya, kakain ako, mga ganyan. So, halos 3 days yung parang lasing ka or nakadrugs ka na hindi mo alam. <laughs> Bombs are dropping everywhere. Tanggapin mo lang nasa doon kasi sa situation na yun. Kasi wala din magagawa kung binubumba kayo dyan, tatakbo ka sa labas. Ano nun, di ba? Baka barilin ka din nila. Kasi akala nila tatakbo ka. Hindi yung intention mo sana umiwas ka ng bumba. Baka sa isip nila, tatakas ka. One day, Omar Maute finds him crying. Sabi niya. Um, Umar, gawin mo na lang tong trabaho na to. Yung parang humanitarian na ano ba, dahil kapwa mo sila tao. O mong gawin to dahil captors or terrorists. He meets Hapilon himself. Sabay kami nagdasal eh, nakakatakot yun. Siyempre yung alam mo, yung mood nila doon parang, ganun, parang mga seryoso, mga ganun, oo. Pero hindi ko pa doon siya na-recognize na si IH yun. Kasi lately ko lang niya na-recognize nung nakita ko na yung mga news. They learn to pray like Muslims, but all the while they plan their escape. Pero before that, may mga plans na talaga kami ni Father. Inihintay lang namin na medyo malapit lang yung operatives. Kasi mahirap naman na tumakbo ka dyan or tumakas ka na, andun pa pala sa milya-milya yung layo ng mga sundalo. No. We're only about 400 meters away from Bato Mox, where <laughs> troops had a chance to fire with the enemies. They overwhelmed them and were able to rescue Father Chito Sugano. After 117 days in captivity, no. they are free. Pray for me. For Finally. Me. Thank you very much. God bless you. Troops push forward day by day. You can't win the Philippines army. That's the last of the strong, enemy strongholds you know? fall one by one. Because they have the best shooting team in the world. Oh. Is Nilan Hapilon and the Mautes put up? Oh my god! Is that real cops? On October 16, oh my god! They meet their end in Marawi. In an assault that Colonel Almodovar makes, God, why you didn't cover it? A bullet to Hapilon's chest. Oh my God! Another bullet to Omar Mota's head. Put an end to the reign of terror. I I can't have dinner tonight. In original video, you can see the dead, but I put the cover so that it makes it you know more moderate to watch it. I am confirming that the taunted Emir of ISIS in the Philippines. And Abu Sayyaf leader is Nilon Hapilon and the last of the dreaded Mauti brothers, Omar, Omar Kayam, are both dead. Wow, devastated. This is what's heartbreaking going inside the battle area. We see how houses are destroyed and we're seeing human Ooh. skeletons among the debris still to be retrieved from the battle area. The crisis is not over. Beyond rebuilding homes and burying bodies claimed by the oh longest war God. since World War II is an urgent cry to address the root cause of conflict. There are boiling issues to resolve to prevent Marawi from happening again mm. here or elsewhere. Carmela Fonbuena, Rappler. That was good to report. Well, now I feel like I'm quite familiar with this war. Yeah, as I said, it, it must be one of the worst wars since World War. This war kept long, 156 days, if I remember correctly, and many casualties. You, you can say that it's the worst war since World War II. 
By the way, I don't really get why the news about this war wasn't really big in Japan. I knew the news about this war, but I didn't expect it so catastrophic at the time. Maybe that's because、uh, most of the focus on news in Japan is about the US. You know, we are the dog of the US, so that's why maybe that's shame on us, right? Anyway, I've been reacting to this. War and I found something new、uh, about the Philippines.、Um, some were really good, some were really bad.、Um, I feel like I got to know Philippines more. I'm glad to do that.、Uh, you know, because the Philippines where I live. Well, I hope for the safe in the Philippines in the future more. And there are still lots of、um, issues that remain in the Philippines, but. I hope Japan、uh, helped a、uh, part of the critical issue in the Philippines and、uh, we united well in the future. Okay, that's it for all today. Thank you for watching my video. Hope you like it. If you do, make sure to like the button and subscribe, please. So, また会いましょう